shower and I can remember saying to myself, I am dying. And then his blood pressure dropped. And I looked at the doctor and I said, what's wrong with him? His heart stopped. And he says, well, we need to intubate your husband right now or else he could die. And then we start doing the chest compressions. Dean Braxton's system was shutting down. It started as a routine procedure to remove a kidney stone. Now he was dying. Dr. Manuel Irigi was on duty in the critical care unit at St. Francis Hospital in Federal Way, Washington. He explains what went wrong. As it turns out with, with him, the antibiotic that he received was uh, not good for the bacteria. He was resistant. Dean's body went into multi-organ failure and his heart flatlined. Dr. Irigi's team worked furiously to revive him. Dean's wife, Marilyn, prayed. I did say to the Lord, I said, Lord, you said in your word that you've come to give Dean life and life abundantly. And I claim that abundant life for him. At times, the unit was in chaos as they worked to save Dean's life. But he was experiencing something very different. I wasn't afraid. It was like, I'm going home. Dean believes he went to heaven. When I first entered in, it was just bright. It wasn't so much what I saw as much as what I experienced. The first thing I perceived was, everything is right. There's nothing wrong here. And I said, it's past peace. You know, there's, there's a scripture in the Bible in Philippians, the fourth chapter, that says, peace past understanding. That's what's going on there. It's landscape, but more, because everything's alive. Nothing's dead. I don't mean just live like grass. I mean, it's intelligent. It can move. You know, it thinks. And someone says, well, that's way out there. It was way out there for me. You know, I'll tell you the truth. Dean says he felt like he was being pulled back into his body. Then he flatlined a second time. Again, he was in heaven. This time, he saw Jesus. The first thing that comes to me is he's bright, just like John says, he's brighter than the noonday sun. And the next phrase I say, I wish people could grab it, and it's this one and we can look at him. And what you're looking at is not so much the physical part of it. You're really experiencing the love he has for you. And I tell people it's, it's like he only loves you and no one else. I saw him communicating to angels. He would just look at them. Communication there was thought to thought. They would acknowledge his receiving his information, bow before him like this, and then back out. And it was like, whoa. Dean admits he didn't want to come back. And I don't tell you the truth. I was happy. I was planning on staying, you know. And people always say, yeah, you know, didn't you love your wife and your children? Yes, I loved them probably more than I ever could. But I was thinking, you come here. You come here where everything is right. Then Dean saw family he hadn't seen in a long time. And yet, on the other side of Jesus was my family, my grandmother Mary, but with her were other relatives. And some I had recognized. I had been on this planet when they were here. But then there was generation after generation after generation after generation of those that accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior that helped to produce me on this planet. They came to greet me in. And it was like, God. While Dean was in heaven, Marilyn continued asking God for a miracle. I purposed in my heart that whatever the outcome, I was going to follow God all the way. After an hour and 45 minutes, Dean came back with a weak but steady heart rate. But the bacteria had done a lot of damage. 
and he had to go on dialysis. I did not think he was going to survive. I, and I, in a way, I, I told his wife that, you know, now well, we have just to pray and, and wait because there's nothing else I can do. I believe in healing. I believe that God is a healer. And uh, I was trusting God for Dean's healing. Three days later, Dean woke up. He was so eager. We got to get people saved. We got to let people know about Jesus. Despite doctors' concerns that Dean's prolonged ordeal would leave him impaired or even worse, there are no signs that Dean even had a brush with death. He's the picture of health. In fact, the staff at St. Francis Hospital dubbed him the Miracle Man. It's a miracle that he's alive. There's no question about it. It is a miracle. Yeah, he's somebody alive, that he's talking, that he has no brain damage. Uh, but but this, this is very exceptional because he was really, really dead for, for a long time. So what does a man do who's experienced heaven and still wants to be there? Dean says Jesus told him something that keeps his feet firmly planted. I felt like he was saying, I need you there, why did I need you here? And I came to understand then how important it was for me to complete what God had put me on this planet to do. The bottom line is, until I'm finished here, you know, and, and I cannot go back home. I tell people most of the time, I'm on my way home. Don't get me wrong, I'm on my way home. This is the pathway my father says I have to go to get home. Amazing testimony, and uh, thank you so much, uh, Dean, for that. And uh, we're going to hear some more, obviously, from uh, Dean. And so... Uh, as soon as he comes up, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, get going. I'm not sure if they're going to go ahead and get him back up again right now. Are we, guys? He's up. All right, there he is. Okay, Dean, thank you so much. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, we appreciate it. Thank and you. So you can go ahead, Dean, uh, just share with us, men, uh, your heart this morning. Come on, let's welcome Dean one more time. Well, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Richard. And uh, I also want to thank Pastor Nancy um, just for having me to be able to do this uh, during this time frame of the, uh, of the world, really. I mean, sometimes we just look at the United States, but this is impacting the world. You know, my Bible tells me that the harvest is plenty, but the labors are few. And when Jesus was saying that, he was not saying it for just the United States or just the countries around us. He was saying it for the entire world. Well, that's good news to know that uh, that harvest is not just for um, the local area where we're at. That harvest is also for the world. And this streaming that uh, many <laughs> of us uh, uh, churches and people have had to do is reaching the world. It's reaching places that um, people wouldn't thought could be reached with the gospel because most people around the world have phones. They have smartphones. And so they, they didn't have the lines that we have put in in the United States, you know, the infrastructure that we have for our telephones the old way now that we look at it. So when the um, um, new phones came out, a lot of the people around the world picked up those phones and now they have access to hear uh, this message today, this service today, your services that you have online. And the good thing about it, once it goes online, it's there for, I don't wanna say forever, but it's there for a long time and people can look at it, and God can still move as, as though that service was happening right then and there in that person's life. Is that good news, you guys? That's great news right there. That's something to celebrate. So I just thank God that we have this opportunity. Um, you know, um, that video that you just watched uh, is the one I use when I go into the schools a lot. I, I, I get to go into schools, mostly in California. Uh, mostly I'm invited into the high schools to uh, present um, what it was like for me to die and go to be with the Father and Jesus. And I know some of you are saying, what? How could that be? Well, usually it's the Christian club that invites me. They tell all their friends, this man that died is coming to talk about what it was like to die. And guess what happens? All of a sudden, we're uh, supposed to have a few kids in a classroom. The, kid, the, the classrooms are overflowing to most of the time I have to have an auditorium. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jesus, you guys. That is Jesus. You've got to understand, a few years ago, Father told me um, that he wants California. Wow. You're in the 
the best place there is right now because he told me he wanted California. And all I said to him, and this is before all the schools started opening up to me, um, he's, all I said to him was, how can I help? That's what you need to say. How can I help? How can I be a part of this? You that know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you that born again, you that have the Holy Spirit residing on the inside of you. God wants where you live. So all you have to do is say, how do I put myself into position to be able to do the best that you want me to do for the community that I live in? One of the things that I experienced when I left my body and went to the, be with the Father in Jesus, I always tell people I can prove I died. You heard the doctor. Dr. Rigge was the actual doctor that was in the room when my heart stopped for an hour and 45 minutes. I used to live in the state of Washington up by C Seattle. This is where this took place at. And um, 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 one of the things uh, about that doctor, Dr. Rigge, at one time he was rated as one of the top 10 doctors in the Washington area. And he was rated as the number one patient care doctor. So his credentials are solid. So when he said the man was really, really dead, he know what he's talking about. <laughs> you know? I always think about that because I always tell people, I didn't know you could be really, really dead. I thought you just died and that was it. <laughs> you know? but, but the bottom line is that he knew what he was talking about. So I can prove I died. Because I was born again, because I knew Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, because I had confessed with my mouth and believed in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, I went where Christians are supposed to go. It's not unusual for Christians to go to heaven. That's what happens to us when we leave our body. <laughs> you know? Now, coming back is a whole different issue. Uh, uh, sometimes people think I was so lucky that I got to go to heaven, or, and then or they'll say I was blessed, and I say, yes, I was blessed. But I, I told this story last night, and I'll tell you guys, I love it because I think this little kid captured it, okay? He said to me, this little kid about nine years old said to me, he said this, he said, uh, uh, you went to heaven? I said, yes. He said, um, uh, 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 you died? I said, yes. He said, you came back? I said, yes. And then he said to me, was this, sorry. <laughs> you know, he got it. You guys, I didn't go to heaven to tour it or to, to, to spy it out so I can come back and tell you all about it. I went to heaven because Jesus, you know, okay, said that's what happens to us when we leave our body. You know, I was planning on staying, to be honest with you. I, I, I was not planning on coming back to this planet. You know, that was God's plan and, and my wife's plan. I always say Jesus and my wife ganged up on me, <laughs> you know? but my goal was to stay. You know, one of the scriptures I like to point out is found in John, the 14th chapter, 1 through 6. I usually tell you this scripture. Um, the reason I say that is because this scripture right here captures really everything I experienced. Most people don't see that because you see just certain things, but I see everything in this. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. This is Jesus Christ talking. And my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I would come again and receive you to myself. That where I am there, you may be also. And where I go, you know. And the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. If you don't get anything out of what I say, get this. The only way to get there is through Jesus Christ. There is no other way to get there. There is only one way, and that's Jesus Christ. I know some people sometimes say to me, uh, that's your belief system. I say, no, 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 you don't get it. You know, that's the way it is whether I believe it or not. That's the way it is whether you believe it or not. It doesn't go on our belief system. It goes on what Jesus Christ has said. And he said, this is the only way to get there. I always tell people, you'll find out. Sooner or later, everybody on this planet is going to leave their body. The bottom line is, when you leave your body, where are you going to go? Because I was born again. Because I knew Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because I had the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. I went where Christians are supposed to go. Because Jesus said, that's where we go. Is that good news? <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, that is great news. Now, the reason I'm bringing that up, because I, I want to talk about an area that I experienced when I was there with the Father and Jesus in heaven. 
Here I am. I left my body. I, I went to heaven. Uh, when I got there, everything was right. There was nothing wrong. It was past peace, and I fit. Oh, boy, I wish I could get into that more. But the Father wants me to move on to something else right now, okay? I remember going up and, and bowing before Jesus. And when I saw Jesus, I bowed. And when I bowed and got on my hands and knees, I said these words to him. You did this for me. And then the next words I said was, thank you, 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 thank you. One time one person asked me, said, well, could you have said something else? You get to heaven and see what you say. <laughs> You're going to be thankful too, to be honest with you. So here it is, you guys. Here I am. I'm bowing before him. And, and, and I noticed something that was happening. There was a lot going on, but this was one of the things that I noticed. I noticed around him was a multitude. It was like a half circle, and he was addressing them. He was speaking to them. He was communicating with them. In heaven, you can talk if you want, but really communication is thought to thought. You know, someone, someone says, well, I don't know about that. And I'm thinking, how does Jesus talk to us now? He talks to us through thought to thought. That's the way he communicates now. You know, so, so he was communicating that way to all the creation there. And he was doing it at the same time. And I know some of you think, wait a minute, how could he do that? He's God. God can do that. Right now, God is communicating to everybody that's, that's in that room and, and as though you're the only one he's talking to. You know, we've got to understand, let God be God. <laughs> he has to be outside of our thinking because some of us need a God outside of our thinking right now. Well, one of the things I came to understand that he was really communicating to that group in front of him, a multitude. Don't, don't, if I say a million, I'm short. If I say a trillion, I'm short. It was a multitude of beings. And I say beings because they were being everything God created them to be. Some of them were demons. Some of them were angels. And he was communicating to them. What was he doing at that time? He was strategizing. He was giving them a plan of what he wanted done on this planet. Oh, that's good news. That is good news. And most of the time, most of us think he's, he's, he, he, he's uh, uh, what do you say, planning for the end of time or he's planning for this. No, he was just planning to get people born again. You got to remember, he wants everyone. There's not a person on the planet he doesn't want. You know, we may not want them all there, but Jesus does. <laughs> and, and so he was strategizing. Now, this was outside of my box. This was outside of any way that I would think of. And yet, it's in the scriptures. And it's in the scripture that I, 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 I've heard for years. But I didn't know it was saying this. I'm going to read it first in the King James, the way the majority of us hear it. And then I'm going to read it in the New English Translation. Because here is Jesus strategizing, you know, to, to, to have, come up with a plan on reaching people that you know, people you know, people that you're praying for, people that you're interceding for. Jesus is putting a plan together, and whether you realize it or not, some of you are part of that plan, okay? So here it is in Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us, unto us a son is given, and the government sh government shall be up on his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. I'll just stop at verse 6. So here it is. You've heard this. We just went through the Christmas season. This is one of the scriptures where the Christmas season you hear all the time. Now I'm going to read it in the Net Bible. The reason I like reading it now, that this is saying, this is how the, the Hebrew uh, really meant for it to be. This is the, 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 the if you took the, the um, words and you uh, define them, this is what's going to come out of it. It says this, for a child has been born to us. A son has been given to us. He shoulders responsible and is called extraordinary strategist. He's called the strategist. He's the one that comes up with the strategist, the, the strategy to reach those that you are praying for. You're the ones that he is looking at to move forward with his strategy. A lot of times we don't realize that we are part of the plan. We're not the plan. We're part of the plan. Here I am in California, and all of a sudden, the Lord lets me know he wants California. And all I said to him is, how can I help? 
I didn't say, well, here's my plan on how to do that, Lord, or here's my, what I can do, Lord. I just said, what do you want? I, I didn't know he was going to open up the schools in California for me to be able to minister. I didn't know he was going to open up the, the junior highs and the high schools for me to be able to go in and, and share the gospel, but he has. I've even been asked to really do all 40, I think it's 42 or 45 of the San Jose high schools. I'm thinking I would have to move to California to be able to do that. <laughs> but Jesus has opened the doors, you guys. Jesus has opened the doors because he has a strategy. And many of you right now are part of that strategy. See, when he was ministering to those angels or talking to those angels, he was literally sending them out the battle in the heavenly realm so that the earthly realm will be opened up. That's what's going on. Many of the time when you're praying for your loved ones out there, maybe some of you in the room right now don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I guarantee you, someone prayed and God opened up the, the spiritual realm so that the physical realm could be see the manifestation of that prayer. That's what he does. We have a good example of that when Daniel was praying. Daniel was praying in, 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 in the uh, 10th chapter of, of, of Daniel, and he was praying. And as he was praying, as he was interceding, an angel was sent to him. And that angel had to battle in the spiritual realm first. And we heard that it took 21 days. And then all of a sudden, that which Daniel was pray, praying for was manifested on this planet. There's two armies that God has, or two units to the army. That's a better way of saying it. There's the heavenly army, and then there are the heavenly unit, and then there's the earthly unit. Guess which unit you belong to? You belong to the, what, earthly unit. You know, Ananias was part of the earthly unit. Jesus comes and talks to Paul or Saul on the road to Damascus, and then he goes to Ananias, and he says to Ananias, I want you to go talk to this man. Sometimes the earthly unit, this is what we do. We start trying to tell Jesus what the plan should be, how he should do it, and how it will work. Because he don't know the, the people on this planet like we do. <laughs> That's what Ananias did, telling Jesus, no, 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 do you know this man? Do you know he's come to kill us? And you want me to go talk to him? Well, guess what? Jesus said, go talk to him anyway, and look at the results. That's what God wants right now. He wants those type of results in, uh, for us. He wants to see us move in that direction that we literally will see the same results for the family members we have, for the people that we know, for the loved ones we're praying for, for our president of the United States of America, for all the government officials, because he told us to pray for them, you know. Recently, I put out a video uh, of what Christians, our responsibility is first, and our first responsibility is to pray for those in authority. That's what it says in the Bible. Boy, did I get some uh, uh, a pushback on that because <laughs> a lot of people did not want to pray for, for some of the administration that we have right now, you know. But it's not about how we feel. It's about what he said. He has a strategy. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows who to reach, how to reach them. All we have to do is be available. That's why I said to the, to the Lord when he said that he wanted California, how can I help? Because I just wanted to be available. Why am I saying this to you guys? Why am I saying this to the men? Because you're the first responders. You're supposed to be responding first. How do I know that? If you even look at, at what, uh, 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 what do you say, um, man means, it, it really is a ox, a strong one. It's supposed to be out front. You're supposed to be out front in fighting this battle. That's not diminishing what the women are supposed to be doing. But you're supposed to be taking your rightful place of moving far because, forward because you're a part of this strategy. Each and every one of you, God has put you in a, in a position to be a part of this strategy. I saw it from a heavenly point of view. I saw it. <laughs> Some of you looking for confirmation. Well, you got your confirmation straight from heaven. <laughs> Is that good news? Yeah, yeah. There's a call right now. God is calling you. He's calling you to do more. He's calling you to move forward. He's calling you to be everything that you can in his kingdom. One of the things that I do, I'm going to grab it. It's right here by me. This big old binder, I, look at it. That's my prayer list. 
okay? And, and, and some of you may say, whoa, you pray for all those names in that prayer list? I do, not all at the same time. I, I kind of separate them up. But I want to show you this because this is part of what God has me to do in the sense of this strategy, okay? Oh, wow. It's, it's, it's a, it's a uh, what do you say, a four-incher binder, so it's big. And, and this is just the part of it, okay? But I wanted to show you what I have in here. I put pictures in here. I get the pictures of people and I put them in here, you know, and I pray over the pictures. It's almost like a photo album. Do you know how that helps me in, in the strategy of what God wants me to do? Not only am I a part of, of physically doing the things that God wants me to do on this planet, but spiritually I'm praying for all these people. And I got lots of people, lots of people. I'm challenging some of you to start a photo album of people to pray for, starting with the president and the administration. I don't know if you agree with them, I don't agree with them. I don't know, but I know one thing, we're to pray for them. You know, I can keep on going on, but I want to leave a little time for questions today. You know, I felt like God said he, he wanted me to, to be able to be open for questions. And then I just want to pray for people before I get off. So um, Richard or, or, or whoever's taking care of this, if we can have that where I can answer some questions, I really would, uh, um, i say appreciate it, um, but really I'm available right now to do it. <laughs> okay. You know, please come up to the microphone, ask your question. If you have that, we have a microphone right here. And so uh, if anyone has a question in any specific area, Dean, is that what you would like? Well, you know, it's mostly if they want to ask around heaven. Um, um, it, sometimes I'll defer, uh, Pastor Richard, uh, to you if it's some doctoral things around church things, because, you know, each body has their uh, a direction that God has put them in. So I don't want to get in the way of those directions, you know. <laughs> I, uh, so, <laughs> no, but if it's worry. around my experience of what I experienced in heaven, what I saw, um, you know, tomorrow morning in, in, in the morning service, I'll cover some other things uh, more in the general sense. But to, today, this is what the Lord wanted me to cover around the strategy that, you know, strategy that Jesus is putting forth and how I saw that happening there in heaven. Amen. Uh, anyone uh, have a question about heaven? Yep. Come on up. All right. I'm sure we've all wondered and asked God, so what's heaven like? Here you go. I have a question. Uh, did you see Jesus' face? Yes, I did see Jesus' face. Um... I'm going to give you the B portion to that. You asked the A. I did see his face. Um, I do hate describing it. And the reason I hate describing it is because it's more beautiful than you could ever imagine. It's hard to describe something out of time. We use time to describe everything. And Jesus is no longer in time. In heaven, uh, no one's deteriorating. No one's falling apart. Here on the planet, We've got the descriptions, really, of everybody falling apart. We use the word old a whole lot, how old you are. Even when children are born, we say, how many days have they been here? Or how old are they? You know, and we count the days. Well, in heaven, there's no counting of days. I can tell you this. The moment I looked at him, he looked beautiful. And the next moment, he looked beautiful, more beautiful than that. And the next moment, he looked more beautiful than that. Every moment there, you know, everybody... It, is, is moving in the, in the realm of life. So in the sense of life, it, it, it's hard to, to describe exactly what it looked like. Thank you. There, yeah. there is one thing I can say about that. The Bible does say we will see him as he is. I have a question this morning. Um, you mentioned that you were greeted by family members who were there in heaven. Um, were there any thoughts of family members that you did not see in heaven? You know, I, I get that question quite a bit. And, and number one, I have to answer like this. I didn't think that many family members of mine would be there in heaven. All right. <laughs> if, if you know that, you know, I also thought one of them that I saw there would be in hell, but they were there in heaven. But the only way you get there is through Jesus Christ. I came to understand that the bottom line is it didn't matter what I thought. It mattered what Jesus thought. 
I really believe the majority of us are going to see more family members than we thought were going to be there because all Jesus Christ asks you to do is accept him as Lord and Savior. Even in that last moment, many of you are praying for your family. Part of the strategy that, uh, that, that God has in place is you're praying, you're asking for this. This is God's will. He wants your family member, and he will pursue them or pursue that person all the way up to their last breath. Okay, most of us don't realize that my wife, when she worked in the hospital, many times would go in the room before a person would die and lead them to the Lord. Most of us are going to be surprised all the family members that made it in that we didn't think made it in. You know, this is good news for some of you out there right now, because you're wondering if this person made it or that person made it. And I can tell you right now, if you pray for them, it's awful hard for them to go to hell. It isn't that they don't have their own free will and they can't choose to go in that direction, but you sent God Almighty after them. That's who you give him credit. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to reach them. He knows how to go after them. So to say, when I got there, that I, I, I thought this family member would be there and they weren't there, I can't think that way. I can't go into that realm anymore because I, I know my father wants them there. And I experienced, it not only was uh, people that I knew when I was on the planet, but it was generation after generation after generation after generation after generation after generation of all those that had made that move toward God and made that commitment to Jesus, they were there in heaven. Is that good news? All right. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. So probably we ought to worry about us making it there, wondering whether then who'd <laughs> somebody else make it, right? Make sure we get Pastor in there. Pastor Richard, Praise God. That's, a, that's a good way. I like to say it this way sometimes. When you get to heaven, you go see someone there, and you go say, wow, you made it? They're going to look at you and say, wow. <laughs> You made it. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Any other questions? All the way. Come on. If you have a question, just make your way up. Don't worry about it. Just If you have a question, just get in line on this side or on this side of the microphone, whichever you want. Uh, just make your way up. Thank you. Uh, yes. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, I was doing my devotion, uh, I think it was like maybe two weeks ago, and my father-in-law just passed away uh, last year, I believe it was like November, somewhere around there, I forgot. Um, but my, my wife was wanting a, a, a confirmation that Papa made it to heaven. Yeah. Because uh, she said, man, he was, he's crazy. But he had Jesus, and during my devotion, it was like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. I was in the presence of God, and Papa, it was weird. I felt like Papa visit because the Bible says that we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Yeah. But like yeah. you were saying, that we, he wasn't talking, but I can, I can sense his, like, there was no, there was no opening mouth. There was just a, yeah. a communication. And when you said that, it's like confirmation. I'm like, wow, that it's heavy because in a vision, Papa took me all around the world and showed me magnificent th things that he's seen. And I was yeah. like tripping out. I'm like, nah, this can't be real. This is not true. But the Bible says that God does more than we can ask or think. Yeah. So by, by going in the spiritual realm, it's real. And I'm learning that. And like you said, that God, when you said God wants... Uh, Jesus wants California. It was just bringing confirmation to me. And I want to say thank you for yeah. opening your house to us. Well, you're welcome. Amen. You're welcome. Amen, Pastor. Thank Amen. you so much. Okay, right there. I have a question one of my nephews asked. Uh, they asked if there's going to be food in heaven. Ah, uh, let me tell you about this food thing. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, when I was there, I was giving Jesus praise. And I just remember the closest I could come to the feeling that I was experiencing at that moment was that it was like eating. I was being filled. And yeah, I wasn't eating. I was just giving the Lord praise. The other thing that came to me as I was reading my Bible in the fourth chapter of John, Jesus says these terms. He says that uh, when the disciples come to him after he's talked to the Samaritan woman, he says... Um, uh, they say, well, you know, we got food for you. Are you going to eat? He says, no, I have food that you know not of. 
I remember laying in my bed later on after this happened to me and said, oh, now I understand about the food that you're talking about. When you get to heaven, you're not going to need food like you think you're going to need food. Because the bottom line is that you're going to be nourished because of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in that fourth chapter of John that the, what he was really saying was, I was doing the will of my father. Because I was doing the will of my father, I was nourished. You know, oh, someone better grab what I just said there. Somebody better just grab what I just said there, because that's powerful in itself, you know. But the reality of it is, those that enjoy food, God is still going to have you enjoy things like that. It may look different. He's not taking away any of the things that you enjoy that is good, okay? Those things you're still going to have in heaven, they're just going to look different, you know, he's the one that gives us the joy for those things. So I share that with people all the time. I didn't need to eat. I wasn't starving. I wasn't looking for food because I had Jesus Christ. I know for some of you, how can that be? How can we live? You're going to be living off the Father in Jesus. The Holy Spirit on the inside of you will be more nourishment than you can ever manage. I wonder if that's the way it's supposed to be here on the planet. I bet a lot of us would be a lot thinner if we did that. <laughs> And praise God. Anyone else? Okay, we have someone coming up. Hello, Dean. Uh, Brother George here. Hey, um, I asked you this question the other day, and I thought your answer was fascinating. So there are so many languages in the world, different dialects. People speak Spanish, English, French, Brazilian, whatever, however it works. But what language will we all speak and will we be able to communicate with everyone in heaven? What language will we speak? You know, George, that's a good question. And, and I answered it the other day for you. Number one is that really in heaven, you can speak if you want to, you don't have to. Um, thought to thought is like I said earlier, is how you communicate. You know, if me and you were in heaven and we were meeting together, our first communication would be like this. How can I serve you? That would be the first thought that we would give each other. Because God has given us these gifts that we have, and they are to enhance somebody else. And so I would try to take my gift and, and enhance you, and you would offer your gift to enhance me. So our first statement to each other would be, how can I serve you? It's no different than what the Bible says we're supposed to be doing now. Servanthood is the highest you know, form of, of worship, really, that we're supposed to be giving to God is serving, you know. The other thing that I, uh, that I said to you is each and every person will have their own language. I know somebody said, oh, no, 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 no. What do you mean we'll all have our own language? How can we understand each other? First of all, you won't be in this realm. You'll be in heaven. You, you will operate in, in the, uh, 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 what do you say, the parameters of what, how heaven is ran. And how heaven is ran, there will be nothing impossible for you. Oh, no. That is good news. That you got to understand, when I say there's nothing impossible for you, the, a lot of times people want to do uh, things that are impossible that are bad. <laughs> but there won't be no bad things to be doing in heaven. You only do the good things. <laughs> So I say that to you so that you understand. If someone else is speaking a different language, and it's really their heavenly language that they're talking to their father with, and you'll be able to understand it, you'll be able to understand everybody's language. God has loved us so much that he's given each and every one of us a personal language. So that's, an, that's something to think about. That is really something to think about, you know. Whew. I could go on and on on that one, George. I could really go into it, uh, but I want to open it up for some more questions. <laughs> yep, right over here, Jacob. Hey, Dean, how you doing? Hey, I'm I doing have, great. I have a question. Um, as you as you said, you saw your family that you that you didn't think would make it to heaven. Were you able to see your family that you left on Earth? And you know. I, I could if the Father wanted me to. I could look down on this planet and see uh, my family on this planet. Scripturally, I, I go to Revelation when John was going through the parts of, of Revelation. He could look down on the planet and he could see things here on the planet. You know, um, The good thing about it is anyone there that's looking down on the planet and seeing their family, they're not seeing the bad things. They're seeing it like God sees it. 
they're seeing the good things, you know. One of the scriptures I used to point this out is found in, in Judges. When uh, the angel came to Gideon, you heard the story of Gideon, you know, um, and the angel comes to Gideon and how he addresses Gideon, he says, mighty man of valor. Well, if you know the story, Gideon was hiding at that time. He was not a mighty man of valor, and yet the angel called him a mighty man of valor. Why did he call him a mighty man of valor? Because that's how God saw him. They will see you as God sees you. You may think, oh, do they see me going through all this trouble and all this pain? They see you being victorious. They're rejoicing. I remember this is somebody I saw that I thought was really cool, was any time a family member overcame something over on the planet, literally the family there would turn to the father and give him praise. Is that good news? <laughs> All right, that, that's exciting. Praise God. Uh, and right over here. Yes, sir, Andy. How are you doing today? Um, I have a family member that had a baby a week ago and um, only lived four days. Any advice is how I can comfort them or where she's at because it's hard. You know, Andy, I, I can barely hear you, but I did hear that you had a family member that had a baby, I believe, and, and, and that baby only lived on the planet for four days. Is that correct? I'm just kind of struggling on what to tell them. Any, and God brought you here, so here we are. <laughs> well, what I would, would, would say, first of all, is pray for them. I know sometimes we think... Um, that's not enough, but it, it's more than you can ever imagine because to, first of all, to understand, we were never meant to be separated, period, okay? The grieving process that we have because we lose somebody is because when God created Adam and Eve, he really created them to be together forever. Because of Adam's messing up, now we have separation. That's like ripping a piece of paper in half that was not meant to be ripped in half. There is going to be some pain involved in that. So that's what you have going on anytime anyone loses anyone on the planet. Now, when it's a child, what you have is people are looking forward to raising that child so that that child can, to, can be really the best they can on this planet. And when they lose that child, there's that ripping that takes place. The only one that can heal that area is the Lord Jesus Christ. All you can do is, is just be an ear and hear them, okay? You can't fix it. Only God can suffice in the sense of making that which was lost in the, into something where someone can live with it. I, I don't want anybody to ever forget somebody that left the planet. But you can live with, they left, and my dad left the planet a few years ago. You know, I, I, that's how I say it. He left the planet. Why do I say that? Because I will see him again. Okay. They will, if they're born again, know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, they will see that child again. And guess what? That child will come to greet them in. Is that good news? And there will never be separation ever again. There are no memorial services in heaven. <laughs> there is no funerals in heaven, you know. <laughs> I tell people all the time. Uh, I was still uh, Pastor Richard this earlier. Get used to this face; you will see it forever. <laughs> Us that are born again, we gotta understand this is not a temporal relationship that we have with each other. It's eternal. So this child went on to be with the Father and Jesus in heaven. This child went on to be with the Father and Jesus in heaven. This child went on to be with the Father and Jesus in heaven. That doesn't bring a lot of comfort to the family. The only one that's going to be able to come in there and comfort that family is the Lord Jesus Christ, and he will do it. He wants them, he wants them to be comfort, you know, and he wants them to know that. So the most you can do is pray for them. Please don't discount your, your going on your hands and knees and praying. I was a counselor for years, uh, and, 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 you know, before I started doing this full time. And, and, and I tell you, um, words will not suffice for what they've gone through at all. But prayer will help them go through it. Yes. Praise God. Another question right here. Hi, Brother Dean. This is Elton Ratliff. Uh, when we get married, one of the, the last things they tell you is death do you part. Whether you pass or your wife passes, when you guys read 
join back in heaven? Are you guys still considered married, or how does that work? Well, that's good. Good, and the Bible tells us no, you're not. I can tell you that right off the bat. The Bible, Jesus said, there's. There's no marriage in heaven. He says that in a story where he talks to some people. But the relationship that you will have with that person will be 10 times greater than it is here. I have no words to even describe it. Here, it says that when a husband and wife uh, are together, they become one. That's the top. That's the top. That would be the bottom in heaven. Your relationship there will be even greater than it is here. Is that good news? <laughs> <laughs> I tell people, if you have a bad relationship, it will be great. If you have a good relationship, it will be greater. Either way, it's going to be great, you know? So I just share that with you. And then there's you that are out there that have had a divorce and you married again. Just think, there's no jealousy in heaven. Nobody's going to get upset. <laughs> no one's going to get mad. So don't, don't even think about that. You're all going to get along the way God meant for us to get along. There is no attitudes in heaven. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here's uh, thank you, Brother Dean, for your time. Um, can you touch on the aspect of, of worship in heaven, what that looked oh, like man. you saw and experienced? I, 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 I touched a little bit on that last night, you know, and I really didn't even get to really go into the worship like I wanted to uh, in the sense of breaking it down for the ladies so that they can move forward uh, and in, in their secret place. A lot of them grabbed it, and I thank God for that because Jesus did it, okay? That's the bottom line. But I'll tell you the truth. One of the things I came to know about worship is doing the will of God. Anytime you're doing the will of God, you're worshiping him. We consider the singing as part of the worship, uh, as being worship, and it is. It's just a part of it. But your actions and whatever you do is worshiping God. You know, uh, so I share that with you because that's what it was like in heaven. The moment I got there, I was worshiping the Lord. I didn't have to do anything. Just being there was worshiping the Lord. You got to grab what I just said. You know, many times, many of us try to do this or try to do that to say that we're worshiping the Lord. And I'm telling you, you that uh, God gave you a job gave you a job. You know it's God that gave you the job. When you get up in the morning or whenever time you go to work, when you start to make a move in that direction, you're worshiping the Lord. Is that good news? You know, the praise and singing, it, 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 it's, it, we were there and I got to do that around the throne of God. You know, uh, I don't usually get on online and, and, and push anything or say anything. I got some books out there. But one of the books I have is called Deep Worship in Heaven. If you give your name to, to George and, sit, and he sends me that name with your address, I will send you that book. Anyone else? Right over here? All right. Dean, this is great. We, we appreciate it. Um, this is awesome. You're taking time with us to be able to answer some questions. We appreciate that. Mask down at the mic. Um, we've disinfected them, so uh, just pull them mask down so that way it's a lot clearer. Thank you. Okay, uh, uh, last night my wife was here and I said, she told me that I was going to be in for a big surprise. And no doubt, you have a awesome, glorious testimony. The question I have, I was just curious, I was gonna come up, but I was curious, after your glorious adventure, when you first saw your wife, what was the first thing she said to you? You know, um, she was happy I was alive on the planet, number one, okay? Um, the whole ordeal, um, I died because of a, of a kidney stone infection. Um, that was supposed to be taken care of before they did the operation for the kidney stone. But when they blasted the stone, they sent the poison into my body and I became septic. Everything in this body started shutting down. I got on the ventilators. I was on life support for three days, okay? And no one expected me to really live even after that. So when they finally um, uh, took the tube out of my mouth, she wasn't the first person I saw. It was another man. And I looked at him and I said, you know, you know, you know there's a Jesus. You don't have to hope there's a Jesus. You don't have to wish there's a Jesus. There's a Jesus. And I told him to go tell as many people as he could, all right? 
And then she didn't come into the room. She let my mother and my dad and my brother come into the room first. And, and, and then I talked to them. This is after they had taken the tube out of my mouth. And then she came into the room and she was so thankful um, that God put me back in his body. Okay. I, I'm still uh, at a daze, to be honest with you. You go to heaven and come back to the planet, you're going to be at a daze. <laughs> okay. And I'm still at a daze just looking around and thinking about all that I just experienced by being with the Father and Jesus in heaven. But she was just a very, very, very good to me. You know, I wasn't the best to be back on the planet at that moment because I wanted people to be saved. You know, I wanted people to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Um, uh, let's put it this way. I was saying, I'll get me out of this bed. I got to tell people about Jesus, you know. And so uh, I had to stay there for a, a few more days because no one believed that I could make it through what I made it through. And that's even why they called me the miracle man uh, in that area because of what took place. But I can't, um, all I know is that she was so loving, so caring. She was such a servant at the moment. Um, she was happy I was back on the planet. She, 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 you know, it, it, it impacted our family in such a way. The man that left, and I was not a bad person when I left the planet. I was doing the will of God in many ways, in so many ways. When I came back, I was a different person. And, and she knew that. I was not the same man. Literally, we had to rebuild our relationship after I came back. That's something people don't realize because I was not the same. You know, my agenda was not the same. My motives were not the same. Um, why, you know, all kinds of things have changed. People that saw me, ah, we see some changes, but she knew me and she knew all the changes. Okay. And so she had to readjust. I had to readjust because of all the changes that took place. You know, we're going on right now, 37 years of being married, you know, and so, <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of my colleagues that have this type of experience end up in a divorce. The spouse usually leaves them because they're so changed. So I'm telling you, sometimes I tell people, the only reason my wife stayed with me is because she prayed. <laughs> she kept on praying when she had to go through all those changes, you know? So I always tell people, don't wish that your spouse go to heaven and come back because they're not going to be the same. <laughs> this is Pastor Richard. Um, yes. I guess as a pastor, and, and your experience also the same, what, when you minister to people, as a pastor, what do you feel would be the most important thing? You could, there's so many topics to preach about, so many issues that a pastor can cover in ministry. And so what do you feel would be the most important thing to impress men um, concerning their, I guess the word I'm looking for is obligation or um, what should be their motivation? What should I be trying to motivate men to do above all? What Jesus Christ, um, Pastor Richard um, said, you know, with the love of our Father, with our heart, our mind, and our soul. That's what he is the first step for men is to love God is to love him with everything. You know, um, to be honest with you, I knew when I got to heaven that Jesus would love me, not in the, in the Im impact that I experienced here, but to see my father love me like he did. Oh man. That's what motivates me to this day to even do the things that I do is because I know my father loves me. Even for me to to refer to him as father was not the way I referred to him before this happened to me. I did not refer to him as father, God, Lord, those type of things, but I never referred to him really as father. After this experience, he became my father, you know, he became my father. And that has motivated me more than anything as a man of God is that my father is with me. Uh, I, you know, my, my, my earthly father was a good man on this planet to me and gave me a lot of advantages, did a lot for me. But my heavenly father goes beyond my earthly father in every way. He is with me no matter what I do, what I say, or how I say it. To help me be the best person or the best man on this planet. So to love him with everything you have. Jesus said those that love him, and he's talking about himself, will keep his commandments. 
And I'm not just talking about the Ten Commandments that people always, I'm talking about anything he's commanded us as men to do. You know, one of the things, you that are married, you know, uh, uh, the, there's a scripture in the Bible uh, that, that talks about he that finds a wife finds a good thing, you know. And, and, and if you really read it in the Hebrew, if you break it down, what it's saying is, because you found one of my daughters and you take care of her, I will give you the resources that you need to provide for her. Whoa. <laughs> That's what it says. If you take the time to study it, you're going to find out. That's what it's saying. Take care of my daughter, and I'll give you the resources. Good stuff. Anyone else uh, have a question? I know we got a bunch of, you know, dedicate this whole discipleship. To, is that okay, Dean, if we dedicate this whole time to you? I mean, I oh, was going to go okay. ahead and speak, but uh, I think it's so important through what you've experienced and I'm sure, looking out here, we've got men with questions and thoughts. You take the, take the floor. I don't have a problem with it. Go ahead. Well, Pastor, Pastor Richard, uh, you know, Jesus knows what he's doing. I'm available. Remember, I said to the Lord, yeah. I'm available. Yeah. Tell me what you want me to do. So, All, right. All right. So if this is part of it, this is California. I know he wants California. So uh, if this Amen. is what he wants, this is where we're going to go. All right. All right. Sounds good to me. <laughs> morning, Brother Dean. A um, little background to my question here. Uh, I grew up in a Christian home. My parents were always at church um, serving God. And uh, my father passed away several years ago uh, from a massive heart attack and a stroke at the same time. And he was pronounced dead for several minutes. And um, after a long recovery, um, you know, he came back. He, they revived him or he just revived, and after a very long recovery, ICU and everything, um, I tried asking him if he's seen anything or, or what he had experienced, and he wouldn't talk about it. Um, yeah. He refused to talk about it, and uh, my mom and I talked about it also, and he, she mentioned that he seemed very afraid of what he's seen and refused to talk about it. A um, few years later, he was diagnosed with uh, cancer and was put into hospice and being in an induced coma for several weeks. Um, I was sitting by his side and he woke up all of a sudden and I was able to pray with him as he took his last breath and usher him into heaven. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for, for that opportunity. So I have the assurance that he is in heaven. But have you ever spoken to anybody that has gone through that and seen hell? Yeah, a lot of people. Um, you know, uh, over the years, you come in contact with a lot of people that have experienced that type of experience. You know, uh, when you're before the Lord Jesus Christ, everything's exposed. You can't hide anything. There is nothing you can hide before him, you know. I, I tell people when I got to heaven, Jesus looked at me, saw himself on the inside of me, and I was in, bottom line. So, so that's what he saw. A few years earlier, I'll be honest with you, maybe about four or five years earlier, if he looked inside of me, if he saw himself inside of me, it would have been all muddled up with a lot of junk, <laughs> to be honest with you. A lot of things that I was doing that, pe that were not Christianized. And so I'm telling you right now, you, when you get up there, you're pure before him. You know, I'm glad that your father decided that he would make sure that he is as pure as he can before the Lord. And the way you do that is that you, you receive him into your life wholeheartedly, not partially, not somewhat, not uh, as a, uh, a, a uh, well, if you do this, Lord, and I do that. No, you just receive him and he will do the rest. And so I have met people like that. Going through that experience and touching eternity, I'm telling you, it, it changes you. You know, whether it's a good experience or a bad experience, you're changed. And I meet so many people, you know, that have gone through that. The other thing that happens is you have to grieve your own death. I tell people all the time that have gone through this, you got to grieve your own death because the person that left and the person that came back are two different people. And, and they're not the same. And so there's a process you got to go through. I had a good pastor that I met with every Tuesday for two and a half years.
that helped me to go through the process of coming to know this part of me, the, the man that was on this side of that experience. And he did it through the word of God. Oh, is that good news? He did it through the word of God. So I share that with you so that you understand. I, I understand what your dad went through. I, I know the, 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 uh, the, you, you're contemplating a whole lot of things because <laughs> everything is exposed. Your agenda is out there then. Okay. So I say that to you because some of you in that room right now, maybe I can't see your agenda. Or somebody else can't see your agenda, but Jesus can send your agenda. He knows exactly. And I would encourage you to make sure that you do everything you can have to have the purest agenda you can have. Not one that justifies you, but one that Jesus says that, that justifies you. Whoa, that's a whole different story, isn't it? <laughs> else anyone else yep yeah. oh right here go ahead uh, first of all I want to say thank you for your testimony awesome uh, I work in a hospital and my my mom was a Christian lady mm -hmm. I was I was like one for it and one for all at the time anyways my dad was end up in the hospital so I was looking at his vital signs and we had lost him once, and he came back. Yeah. And I told my mom, I think he's going to go home today to the Lord. I think he's going to heaven. Yeah. I, I think he's going. So anyways, about half hour after that, my, well, my, 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 maybe about 10 minutes after that, my mom said, well, let's lead him to the Lord. So I said, okay. So we led him to the Lord. And he accepted the Lord, and he told my mom and myself, he was sorry for everything that he'd done to us. Yeah. So uh, anyways, I had came home from work. It was like about three weeks, a month later. I came home from work. I was tired. I sat down on the couch, and I fell asleep, and I heard his voice clear as can be. He said, son, son, it's me, your dad. Tell your mom I made it, and it's beautiful up here, and I'm <laughs> going to wait for her. Amen. That's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yep, Rich. Hi, Brother Dean. Um, I wonder if you can talk a little bit more about the, the strategy. I know you said Jesus is, he was a strategist and, and God was uh, doing something. So I wonder if you can just talk a little bit more, maybe detail of what you saw. Obviously, we deal with a lot of spiritual warfare here on earth. So I'm wondering how that how that correlates with, with what you saw? Well, you know, what I saw probably is, uh, and I went through it pretty quick, is that, you know, one of the things that we're supposed to do, we're told to pray for the harvest. You know, our, our job is to pray for those that come in. So everything that Jesus does starts with our prayers. So the strategy starts by us praying here on the planet. We're making a request to God or the, to, to the Father, and then they come up with a plan on how to uh, uh, initiate that, that um, uh, request. Uh, and I, say in, I have to say in his will, because sometimes our requests are outside of his will. My Bible says if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, we have our petition or we have our request. That means it, that literally they're taking it seriously and they're going to come up with a plan on how to have that come um, out. I usually direct it toward people to come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I, I, I say it for, for, for mostly people because all of the other things will pass away, but what, what won't pass away is your relationships or your fellowships with people. That's eternal. That's not a temporal thing. Sometimes you'll pray for a car, you'll pray for a house. If those are within the strategy of God so that you can reach other people, then that's good news, you guys. And then sometimes someone says, well, he wants you to have your desires. Well, most of our desires that are temporal are going to fade out any other way, you know, but the eternal ones are going to go forever, you know, and when it comes right down for, to it, one of the most eternal ones is your own family members, whether you like them or not. You know, most of us want our family members to be with us forever. 
and to get along. Well, in heaven, they're going to get along. So here I am. Someone's made a request for a family member to come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I saw Jesus literally bow down on, on the, what we call the ground there in heaven. All of a sudden, a city rises up in detail. Like Los Angeles and his detail would rise up. Jesus was communicating to the heavenly host there, the angels, and telling them that his plan on reaching the person in that city. They would leave, and then they would battle in the heavenly realm because the demonic influence over that person. Then Jesus would, would uh, see someone on this planet and, and task them with completing the rest of the plan on the planet. The strategy wasn't so much for the angels because they would know what to do in the sense of when Jesus said do it. The strategy really was who am I going to rely on on this planet to follow through with what I want them to do? You know, if you think about Ananias when he was first chosen to go and talk to Saul or Paul, he resisted. Well, guess what? Many of us do the same thing. Are we too busy? Or we don't have the time? And Jesus is saying, no, the time is now because I got everything set up. You know? The good thing about it, to be honest with you, is if you don't go, Jesus is going to find somebody else. Now, that doesn't excuse you from doing what you want to do because you won't be happy. But the reality of it is this, you guys. Jesus wants them more than you do. Jesus wants them more than you do. And he is going to get it done because you have requested it. When I got to heaven, one of my relatives were there, my Aunt Barbara. I thought she went to hell. If you would have told me she went to heaven, I would have told you she went to hell before this happened. And there she was in heaven. And the only way you get there is through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. When did she accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? I can't tell you. I came to understand it didn't matter if I knew. It mattered if Jesus knew. That's who needs to know you guys. Sometimes we want to know for our comfort, but we can't get nobody in. But if Jesus knows, they in, period. And so she, she got in because she knew Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And you know what? The thing about it, I prayed for her for years. It, you know, it's kind of like, here I am asking God to get her saved, but when she, when, she went, when she died, I'm thinking, oh, you didn't follow through on what you said you would do. And yet he did. So I tell you, somebody out there right now, you've been praying for somebody, guess what? The percentages are pretty high. They accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you know? Now they can say no anytime they want to, you know, in that process. But the reality of it is Jesus. He knows their hearts. He knows their mind. He knows their thoughts. He knows everything about them. He will go after them even up to their last breath. That's good news. That's the strategy. Now, that's that part of it. Now, we, we look at the other things that are going on in the world, and we wonder what God's doing. They, they got a plan. Are we going to be a part of that plan? I live on the East Coast. Most of the people I come in contact with call your side of the world the left coast. They don't call it the, the, the California. They call it the left coast. And a lot of them are praying that an earthquake come and you all fall into the water. <laughs> That's their strategy, but that's not God's strategy. He after California. He wants California. He has a strategy. This church, you are part of that strategy. You just have to be available for his plan, not yours. I just feel like God is calling you right now, whoever this was, to really think about this because he has steps for you right now in California to reach a lot of people for Jesus. And I don't know you. I, I can't even see your picture. I can't even see your face. But I'm feeling in my spirit right now that whether you realize it or not, you are called to go forth and take the message out there to people in California. Wow. In a unique way. That's what he said. In a unique way. All right. I'm, I'm, that's, that's really hard. That's really, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, impressing on me strongly right now. Uh, so, but I can't even see your picture, uh, your face or anything. And yet the, the, the presence of God right now in the sense of what he's calling you to do is strong. You know, just seek him. Go after him with everything you have. Listen to him. He will tell you. You know, if this is your church, you know, that, that we're, we're um, uh, in right now, talk to Pastor Richard about it. Talk. If, it, if it's not, go to your pastor and talk to your pastor about it. You know, but tell him what's going on in your heart.
Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that, is, that is awesome because we do in our ministry disciple, uh, obviously, and uh, pray for men, couples, to go into the harvest field and, and preach the word of God. And we've got men here that, that uh, are doing that and I'm sure who are called to do that. Um, and um, thank you for that encouragement. Anyone else this morning? Yes. We have a question on YouTube. It says, will our families all be together like my son and his grandmas? The question is yes. Let me tell you about family. Family serves in heaven together. <laughs> and, and it's no different than the word of God. Pastor Richard, in the Bible, when the uh, Levites were called, or uh, the, the family of uh, Leviticus, the, in the scripture, rather, the, the book of Leviticus, when the Levites were called, they were called to serve in the temple as a family. Most of us don't realize that. We are literally called to serve in God's kingdom as a family. That's why the enemy's trying to destroy the family. That's why he's trying to break it up. He knows how powerful the family as a servant in his kingdom is. Well, in heaven, there's nothing to break it up. You're going to go to heaven and serve together as a family. God, we have a young man coming up right now, Elijah. Uh, hi, Dean. Um, how you doing? Good, good. How are you? I'm um, doing great. <laughs> I have a question. Um, so... Like the skills and that we learn here on earth, would they be enhanced in heaven? Well, will they be what? I heard, I heard a little bit, but I didn't hear the last piece. Uh, would they be enhanced? Will they be like, um, there in heaven? Or? Yeah, would they, be, would they be enhanced in heaven? Oh, enhanced in heaven. Um, let's put it this way. Here on the planet, your skills are being resistant because of the enemy and just because we have decay in, in, in the earth. The good example is this way. My voice right now you're hearing, you're not hearing it in the pureness, not just because it's online, because now it has to be go through all the decay that's in the atmosphere, okay? So, so if I'm a singer and I have this ability to give God praise, when you're hearing it, it's being distorted because of just the things in the atmosphere that is breaking it down. Well, in heaven, there's nothing like that. So you get to really be the fullness of what God has called you to be in all of your skills in heaven, because there's nothing to resist it. If anything, here you are in heaven, and it gets greater and greater and greater. You could call it enhancement, but it's even more than that. You know, the Bible says you move from glory to glory, and, 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 and that's really huge in a lot of ways. In heaven, there's nothing to resist you doing exactly what God wants you to do with the skills that you have. A tree, just to give you a good example, a tree here on the planet is is fighting to live, if you think about it. If it doesn't have enough water, it could die. If it has too much sun, it could die. If it doesn't have the right soil, it could die. All these things. So a tree has to do all this. In earth, I mean, in heaven, there's nothing to resist that tree from living. What does a tree look like that is not fighting to live? Whoa. What would you be like in heaven if, if you didn't have the resistance of the skills that you have uh, uh, against you, you know? Now, I want to say something. That doesn't mean you stop right now and say, well, I'm not going to use any of these skills here. I'm, I'm going to wait till I get to heaven, then I'll use all my skills there. No, you got to use them here. God has given you the strength. Oh, listen to what I just said. The strength to be able to do what he wants you to do on this planet. Remember when Paul said, when I'm weak, then I am strong. Wow, awesome. So uh, Elijah's a keyboard player, and I'm sure he wants to get better, and which kind of brings me, he's good now, but kind of brings me to, to a thought concerning music um, in heaven, because, you know, we, I love music, and, and most of our people here obviously love worship, but music, what, is there any distinction like that, what you experienced in heaven concerning music? I don't even know where to start on that one, Pastor Richard. 
um, music has such a um, huge uh, play in heaven, just as like it has here on the planet. Um, um, Rich, Pastor Richard, go to uh, Genesis and the third chapter, and it talks about when um, God is coming into the garden, and, and, and it says that Adam had heard the sound of, of um, the Lord in the garden. You, you heard that scripture before. And um, if you look it up and study it, there's one definition for the sound that says voice or music. Now, everybody else will hear all the voice stuff. I hear the music. Because in heaven, anytime anyone spoke, it was like a song. I just tell you that right now. Music is huge, you know, in, this, in the way that God communicates to us. You know, that's, that's why uh, um, thought to thought, you know, uh, is there when you're communicating. But if I was to talk to you, it would be like I was singing to you. And when Jesus said to me, no, it's not your time, go back. It wasn't in the words like I'm talking to you right now. It was he was singing it to me. Interesting. Songs, amen. Praise God. Well, I, I'm saying that. I know some of you are saying, whoa, that's out there. Well, you know, the good thing about it is anything I say doesn't get you into heaven. Jesus does. And some of you may say, I don't know about that. That's okay. You still get to go. And when you go, you're not going to come up to me if I'm there and say, Dean, you were right. You know what you're going to say? Dean, you were really short in describing this place. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Anyone else? Yep. I think we have some people online who are asking questions, which is good. Yes, this question is from Facebook. It says, will we see our deceased pets in heaven uh i don't i don't know what you teach in your church okay some um people say that pets don't go to heaven i can only tell you what i experienced and then i can show you some scriptures or tell you some scriptures around this okay i didn't believe that pets went to heaven when this happened to me or animals went to heaven but here i am in heaven and on my right side is all these animals coming in all these animals. I remember coming back to the planet and saying to myself, I hope no one ever asked me that question, you know, <laughs> to be honest with you, but people did. Where in the scriptures does it say that animals will go to heaven? First of all, I had to establish that animals are important to God. And the reason I, I came up with that is because here we are in, in, in uh, Genesis and we have the flood coming on, and God tells um, Noah to go out and get some animals. So animals are important to God. I know that. We know that in, 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 in the sense of Jonah, when he went to Nineveh, in the fourth chapter, it shows Jonah kind of complaining because Nineveh repented, and God comes to Jonah and says, hey, I, there was 120,000 plus the animals. That really got my, my uh, attention when he said, plus the animals. He just didn't say, I was there to, to save the 120,000 people, but I wanted those animals saved also. The other scripture that came to, to mind was found in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, when it says this, and this is Solomon, the smartest man at the time, the computer at the time, and he makes this statement. You don't know where a man's soul, a, a spirit goes, whether it goes up, and you don't know where an animal spirit goes, whether it goes down. The argument's always been that they don't have a spirit, and yet here we have the smartest man at the time say that animals do have a spirit. Now, some people say they're not spirit like us, but when you do your studying in Genesis, you find out God uses that word uh, that he used for us as spirit as the same way he says animals many times, okay? So, so there's that link there, okay, Th just to share that with you. The other thing that came up was this. In, in Psalms, the, the, the uh, 50th chapter, the 10th verse, it says, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. They're his. He can do what he wants with them. Okay, we're trying to tell God what he can and can't do with animals, and he can do what he wants with them. He owns them, okay? And then there's Psalms, the 36th chapter, the sixth verse. I did not take it out of context. I'm not trying to prove a point here, you know? I'm just telling you what the scriptures say, and it says this. 
uh, uh, God is the one that preserves man. And then it says, God is the one that preserves animal. The word preserves, as you look it up in the Hebrew, means save. That's what it means. He's the one that can do these things. Someone asked me one time, what is that criteria? I said, I don't know. I know my criteria. I'm not, I don't know the animal's criteria. I can't tell you that. But here's something to think about. When God made animals and put them on the planet before the fall, they were created to live forever. I, I'm just putting that out there. They were not created to die. And they didn't even were the ones that caused the decay to come into the world or death to come into the world. It was a man that caused it. So just think about that. Okay. But again, this is one of those things that I tell people, you don't have to believe a word I say. It doesn't get you to heaven, nor does it keep you out. You know, when, when you get to heaven, your pets are going to come to greet you in. And, and they may say to you, you didn't think I'll be here. No, they won't say that. <laughs> but, but I will tell you this, you know, ain't nobody going to be up there saying you were wrong, you know, and they were right. That, that attitude is not in heaven. Oh, boy, is that good news, you know. The bottom line is that I just want to share that with you So because I didn't believe that way before this happened to me. But it's in the word. It's in the word. God cares for animals. All right. That was good. Anyone else? Yes, sir, Elijah. Hi, Dean. Um, is time different there in heaven? Uh, that's a good, good answer. You ready for this one? There's no time, period. You're out of time. You know what I mean? Uh, so there's no, there's really no measurement like, even though uh, according to the medical records, my heart stopped for an hour and 45 minutes. You know, I was not breathing for an hour and 45 minutes. I was what you call clinically dead. When I got to heaven, no one was up there timing and say, okay, you've been here about an hour and 45 minutes. It's time to leave. You, you, you're way over your time now. No one was doing that, okay? <laughs> when Jesus said to, no to me, it's not your time. He wasn't talking about this. He was talking about for me to be there, period. But the reality of it is there's no time in heaven at all. It's eternity. Um, there's, uh, it's hard to describe because here, the only way we describe things is through time. But let's look at something a little bit deeper. Why did time come into existence? Because if we look in Genesis, the, 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 and we look at the, when God created the earth, it's not until the fourth day that we even have an inkling of how we measure time with the moon and the, and the stars because they come into existence. And yet God was saying the first day, second day, third day, and then he says the fourth day. Why was he doing that? Most of us don't realize the reason he was doing that wasn't for Adam and Eve at the time or even the creation of earth because all of that was out of time. Everything there was supposed to go on forever until Adam messed it up. Okay, so why was God counting things like that? Well, the Bible lets us know later on, when Jesus walked the planet, many of the demons would come up to him and say, you come before the time. Time was put in place for one reason. It's Satan's countdown. <laughs> that is the only reason it is there. Most of us don't realize it. Even when you get born again, you go out of time. Yes, your body is still stuck in time, but the real you that's on the inside of that body, that spirit that, that will leave that body and go to be with the Father and Jesus is out of time. Oh, is that good news? Is that good news? Some, some of you better grab what I just said there. You know, you will live forever. You know, sometimes we say you, you, trans, you transform or trans, uh, 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 form from this world to that world. No. You're already there, whether you realize it or not. You're in eternity because your spirit is in eternity. Your body isn't. It'll stay here, but your spirit will never die. So, so in the sense of time, there's no time like, like we know here on the planet. And, and if you even think about it, um, darkness, there's no darkness there. And even the Bible tells us in Revelation, there comes a time when darkness will no longer exist. Whoa. There will only be light because Jesus and the Father will light up everything. Yeah. Is that good news?
Good morning. Um, you just said our body stay here. Um, you noticed your relatives. So we will look the same here on earth and we'll look the same in heaven, correct? Well, what we'll look like is better than we look here on, on the earth because we're deteriorating on the planet. There's no deterioration there. How you really know them is from your heart. You will know them by your heart, okay? It's like someone that gets to know me, they don't need to see me to know it's me when I'm calling them because they know my voice. Does, it, does that make sense to you, okay? So you'll know them in that sense. One of the scriptures I use to, to show that is when Elijah and Moses came down and talked to Jesus on what we call the Mount of Transfiguration. If you remember, the disciples with him knew who they were. How did they know that? There were no pictures of them at the time. There were no Instagrams. There were no you know, selfies that were being made at the time. And yet they knew it was Elijah and Moses. And Jesus didn't turn around and say, Elijah and Moses, that's who I'm talking to. How did they know? They knew because of the heart. You know, Most of us uh, uh, really recognize the ones we are deeply connected to from our heart. Sight is secondary to our heart. So when you go to heaven, you will recognize them from your heart. Is that good news? Oh, man. That's a freedom for some people right now. That's Amen. freedom. Anyone else? Yep. Another question from online. It says, can God give someone a sign to show if a family member who passed away made it into heaven? You know, um, I, I will tell you this, okay? I ran into lots and lots and lots and lots of people that, uh, you know, have gotten signs that a family member is in heaven. I'm going to tell you one that the scriptures tell us that we have, and that is you would know in your heart if they're not there, okay? And the reason I say that is because the Bible says this to us, whether we realize it or not, and it's found in John, the 15th chapter. Every born-again person is connected through Jesus Christ. The Bible says he is the vine, we are the branches. Well, that connection does not stop when a person leaves this planet, whether we realize it or not. Sometimes we have a harder time interpreting the connection because of all the distractions we have around us. But if you feel in your heart that someone is there, go by what your heart says. You know, that's the sign that I tell people. You know, that's why many of you that have lost a loved one and, and you said, I'm, I'm grieving, but I'm not grieving. Because I feel like they're still alive. The reason you feel like they're still alive because you're still connected to them. What's grieving is the five senses. We were never meant to not see each other. We were never meant not to hear each other. We were never meant not to feel each other. We were never meant not to smell each other or taste each other. Those were supposed to be eternal. And when they are gone, we grieve it. That's what we're grieving. Most people don't realize you know, but if you're but if you're spiritually connected to them, you're still connected to them through Jesus Christ. You know, that's why when I say uh, about my dad, I said I say he left the planet. <laughs> I'm not I'm not disconnected from him. He just left the planet. Is that good news, you guys? <laughs> yeah. You know, I think right now, Dean, uh, would be a good time. Uh, you said you wanted to pray f for the men, um, and I'm not sure how, how you wanted to do that, whether it was um, obviously not individually, but specifically in a group, um, to maybe God, something God's laid in your heart to pray for uh, our men here for. Pastor Richard, I, I would like to just uh, do a prayer on, online right now with them. Um, and then I would put it into your hands and you know, you know God would know what to do from then on. Okay, and so, uh, so I, I just want to, I just feel like my heart, uh, you know, I love um, doing um, men, men events. I'm a man, you know, I was going, I was going to tell everybody because I don't want anybody to think I came back and I got super spiritual on you and, and disconnected from everything. I, I'm a, I'm a Seahawk fan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I, I think you lost now, everybody here. <laughs> Uh, I'm a now a Washington fan. Uh, my son-in-law is the um, president of the uh, of the Washington team. Uh, he runs the business side of things there. So I became a Washington fan. 
I, I was a Sonic fan for a long time up there in Seattle until they moved to uh, Oklahoma and became a Thunder uh, team. And, 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 and before that, I was a Laker fan. Okay. So, so just know um, I was a oh, Laker, got, Ram fan. <laughs> But once I moved away, I finally uh, uh, dissolved over into the other teams. I grew up in California, so that you know that. I grew up in the Central Valley. But, uh, but so I still have those, those manly things that I like to do, you know. And so I, I still got to take care of my wife. I still got a family that I'm over, you know, those type of things. So I still have those desires. So that's what I want to pray about as a man over my brothers in, in the Lord to move forward in that way. So I'll just pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for each and every, yeah, each and every son of yours that's in that room right now. I thank you that you love them so much. I thank you that you're touching them. I thank you, Father, that those that need healing right now, physical healing in their body, that they will be healed, that they will literally feel your presence right now touching them and they're being healed. I thank you, Father, that those right now as, as males in that room that are having financial difficulties, whether they lost a job, whether something situations come on, whether another huge bill is coming to the, into their lives, Lord, that you will comfort them and let them know you are taking care of it right now. They will see a miraculous uh, financial change take place. Wow. Father, I thank you right now that where the enemy has come in, to try to stop those from serving you with their whole heart because they got this going on or they got that going on or they got that going on that right now that you are raising up that standard yes lord that you're raising up that standard right now that they're free they're being free to serve you as they're supposed to lord in the name of jesus and father you have given us wisdom as men to be men in your kingdom move forward in your kingdom that sometimes it's being attacked that sometimes being told that it's uh, uh, labeled a, a negative thing instead of a positive thing father we're seeing our world and our country go in a certain way that many of us don't want it to go in whether we believe one side or the other but one thing i know father more than anything else is that you want us to stand up as men to be the leaders that we were created to be be in our families on this planet and in our churches lord wow and in our communities so father as each and every one of these guys go forward each and every one of these sons of yours move forward yes have them move with the power that they were yeah i hear that inherit to have inherit to have because they're your sons they're your sons they're your sons in jesus name i thank you amen amen come on let's give god praise <laughs>